Okay, we continue now our lecture and come to the last point. Uh, in uh, with respect to cleavage fracture and uh, setting the model of yacht H chain. Uh, yacht H chain is a Chinese uh, researcher and uh, in my opinion, uh, he has developed a model for cleavage fracture, uh, which is the current stage of the art. That is in the moment uh, the best what exists. And uh, I want to explain you now the model. <clears throat> the first thing what he says is, that uh, cleavage uh, crack propagation uh, can exist in two ways. Uh, there is a mechanism called direct propagation. Yeah? And what that means is you have an initial crack, a large initial crack in your material, and uh, when you load, Fact uh, material with the crack, then directly from the crack tip of uh, the material, the cleavage crack uh, grows. Yeah? The other mechanism is uh, the cleavage uh, crack uh, proceeds by a formation of a crack nucleus in front of the crack, in front of the initial crack, and the propagation of the crack nucleus uh, back to the initial crack and forward. Okay, so they have the two basic mechanisms, direct propagation and via formation of crack nucleus and propagation of a crack nucleus. And, uh, I describe now that part here, if we have direct propagation. Okay. <clears throat> we have the following conditions for direct propagation. The Griffith criterion for the extension of the initial crack with the size A naught must be fulfilled. Then uh, you, we must have a high stress reactivity so that uh, the initial crack does not plant before uh, a crack extension is possible. And we will see later that for the direct crack propagation, uh, we get a criterion that the stress intensity is approximately constant. Okay, for the second mechanism uh, via formation of a crack nucleus and the propagation, uh, again the Griffith criterion must be fulfilled, but now the Griffith criterion for the formation of the small crack nucleus with size 2a. Yeah. And, uh, to, for the formation of the crack nucleus, in most cases, we need a certain critical plastic strain uh, in front of the crack at the position of the possible crack nucleus. And again, uh, we must have a high stress reactivity uh, so that uh, that the uh, crack nucleus does not plant before a uh, cleavage fracture is possible. And we will see that uh, the con condition uh, for cleavage fracture on that uh, mechanism is that the cleavage fracture stress must be constant. Okay. Let's go back. <coughs> what we can also see 
Same set, direct propagation is very rare. It rarely occurs in metals. Probably uh, for ceramic materials, direct propagation uh, could be a, a for conventional mechanism, but for metals, direct propagation is very seldom. Okay, so in most cases, cleavage crack uh, proceeds via a set mechanism of the formation of the crack nucleus and the propagation of the crack nucleus. Okay. Uh, I want just to uh, say a few words. What is stress-creatality? Uh, I want to uh, repeat that. Uh, stress-creatality is usually described by the, uh, by the ra ratio of the mean stress divided by the equivalent stress. Okay. Mean stress is the Mikrospannung, is the hydrostatic stress, the hydrostatische uh, Spannungszustand. Uh, is, uh, und, uh, equilibrium, uh, equivalent stress is just the Vergleichsspannung. Okay. Good. <clears throat> okay, now we will continue only with uh, uh, fat, with the uh, uh, formation of a great nucleus and the propagation of a great nucleus. And there are two we, we need two steps. Uh, one step is the formation of the crack nucleus, and the second step is the propagation of the uh, crack nucleus. And if you have a mechanism that uh, has two steps, then uh, one of that steps is uh, easier to reach, and another of that step is not so easy to reach. And uh, that step, which is difficult to reach, is the critical step, what, uh, what uh, Chen calls the critical event. Yeah? And the critical event can be you now either the formation of a crack nucleus, if formation of a crack nucleus is difficult, and much more difficult than the propagation of a crack nucleus, or it can be the propagation of the great nucleus. Okay? And now he says, when the critical event is different, then also the critical cleavage stress, sigma f, is different. Okay? Okay. <clears throat> and here he gives two, uh, an example is a carbon gun steel, uh, and uh, in one case, the great nucleus uh, is formed uh, on the position of carbides, and the carbides have a diameter of approximately one micrometer, and, uh, and in that case, that uh, cleavage stress uh, reaches a value between 1,800 and 2,300 megapascal, and uh, that uh, critical energy uh, needed for cleavage fracture is of the order of 150 to 300 uh, joule per square meter. Yeah? That is one case. If uh, the great nucleus has the size of a grain. It is, of course, much larger. 
äh, Gedenken an unsere Grenzscheiche, Between Grenze und Fort in Michaelmecker, in Klein Josef, Sechsler, Triebisch, äh, Fraktionsstreich, ist mal schlauer, im Gleich Between 1000 300 und 1800 Megapascal, und also äh, seit äh, Krieg, äh, Work for Fracture, for producing, Plastic Work for Producing Cleavage Fracture ist mal schlauer, wenn es ein Upper Case ist, gleich around 50 Joule per Square Meter. Okay. <lacht> Gut. Und uh, now, uh, there are three, I think, three remarks. The first remark is, uh, we have spoken about the Griffith criterion, we said, in both cases, the Griffith criterion must be fulfilled. In, in the direct propagation, the Griffith criterion for the uh, initial crack with size A0, and uh, for nucleus and propagation of the nucleus, the Griffith criterion must be fulfilled for the crack nucleus with size A. Okay. Okay, now, uh, that is for Griffith criterion, we know. That is for critical stress, if I have a defect given, then the critical stress must be larger than uh, 2 uh, gamma A divided by pi and the crack length. Yeah? And uh, E is for Young's modulus, for plain strain, you have to account for the poison ratio. And uh, gamma naught is that uh, plastic uh, work that is required for cleavage fracture. And uh, <coughs> for direct uh, propagation, you insert here now the initial grade length A naught. And now you can. Uh, Transform that equation, that equation to that equation, and uh, gamma and A are constant parameters for the type of material, and uh, you find that uh, expression sigma times square root of pi times the crack length is nothing else than the stress and density, and therefore for direct uh, propagation. Uh, the relation must hold that the stress and density is approximately constant. <clears throat> for the mechanism of formation and propagation of great nucleus, you insert now the length of the uh, great nucleus into the Griffith criterion, and you get, that is very simple, you can. Uh, Go through it straight forward. You see immediately that the stress intensity is not constant. It depends on the distance where the crack nucleus uh, lies in front of, of, uh, of the initial crack tip. But the cleavage stress sigma f is constant. Okay. That was, uh, and uh, of course, you always see that uh, for the propagation of the crack nucleus, a critical stress, the cleavage stress, sigma f, must be exceeded. And uh, it is clear it must be exceeded exact position on the crack where the uh, crack nucleus lies. Yeah? And so uh, if the crack nucleus lies very close to the crack tip, uh, it's easier to fulfill as a criterion because you need a lower load. Uh, if the uh, crack uh, is, uh, nucleus has a larger distance uh, from the crack tip, uh, you need a higher load uh, that you can exceed the cleavage stress. Okay, and uh, you can uh, chain was also at our institute and she tried to, almost to find such positions uh, 
infra specimens uh, where cleavage fracture uh, originated, and uh, that means he had uh, means he has to find the positions of the crack nucleus. And here two examples where a, a small carbide lies at the grain boundary, and here another example. It's not that position. It's a position here where uh, the cleavage fracture uh, originates. Okay. Then a second uh, remark. That uh, model of chain works for for sharp cracks, for specimens with sharp cracks, and for specimens with notches. But the cleavage fracture stress is different in fact two cases. In fact, uh, is shown here. If you have a sharp crack, <coughs> you have a high stress reactivity. That means the stresses increase sharply near uh, the crack tip. And uh, you have a high stress reactivity here uh, for ideally uh, plastic material with low hardening. At least uh, the stress reactivity has a fact. Uh, is, is a value of 2.4. Okay? <clears throat> if you have uh, if you have a, a notch, then the stress reactivity in front of the uh, uh, notch tip is not so high. So you have a much a lower stress reactivity here, a value of approximately 0.6. But uh, the distance where you have uh, rather high stresses. Is, uh, extends to uh, a larger distance in front of the notch tip, then uh, it is the case in front of a sharp crack. Okay? <clears throat> and so the schematical situation uh, on a notch, uh, you have, uh, you see here the, the stress reactivity is rather low, but uh, you have high stresses. Uh, even at a quite a large distance in front of the notch tip. Here is shown the stress reactivity uh, near a sharp crack. You have a much higher stress reactivity, but uh, <coughs> the highest uh, stresses occur rather close to the crack tip. That line is the variation of the uh, Plastic equivalent strain. Yeah? In fact, plastic equivalent strain you need for the formation of a crack. You need a certain critical uh, plastic strain for the formation of a crack nucleus. Yeah? And uh, you see, in fact, uh, for a, a notch, the critical plastic strain is rather high for quite a large distance in front of the notch tip. That is not the case uh, for a sharp crack, where you have a higher uh, plastic strain directly at the crack tip or near the crack tip, but then uh, you have a much a sharper decrease. And uh, let's assume now that that value here denotes the critical, the value of the critical plastic strain for the formation of a crack nucleus. Then you see that in that region between the crack tip and that position X1, the formation of a crack nucleus is possible uh, in front of the notch. The same is here. Here, uh, that region between the notch tip, uh, between the crack tip and the Position X1 is the region where crack nucleus uh, can be formed. <coughs> and let's assume that that value is now uh, that uh, cleavage fracture stress that is necessary for cleavage fracture. And you see now uh, in the same region up to here uh, that crack nucleus would be able also to extend. And so we can say, if uh, for a specimen with a notch, the crack nucleus 
is positioned somewhere between the notch tip and the position X1, uh, the which fracture could proceed. <coughs> Uh, let's assume now that uh, the same cleavage fracture stress uh, is we have also in the material with a sharp crack. Uh, you see now that <coughs> uh, between the distance x2 and the, uh, and the crack tip, uh, the extension, the propagation of a crack nucleus would be possible. However, the great nucleus cannot uh, be formed in that region between X1 and X2. So uh, if a great nucleus would be positioned somewhere here, uh, cleavage fracture would not be possible. Cleavage fracture is only possible if uh, the great nucleus is located between uh, here, between X1 and the, the uh, correct it. Okay. <clears throat> then uh, a, a third remark. Uh, when you increase the load uh, from a stressing density K1 to a stressing density K2 larger than K1, or, then uh, the effect is not so much an increase of the maximum stress in front of the correct it, but uh, more that the region where you have high stress is, is uh, elongated. Okay. <clears throat> okay, and uh, finally, now let's assume again that uh, you need a certain critical plastic strain for the formation of a great nucleus. In fact, it's a cross hatched area, in fact, diagram. Uh, and we need uh, a certain cleavage uh, fracture stress for the propagation of the crack nucleus. In fact, it's a upper cross hatched uh, uh, area here. In fact, it's easy to see that cleavage uh, fracture is not possible for the case one. <coughs> Cleavage fracture is only possible if uh, the great nucleus is located exactly at the position X2 in the case two, because uh, you have just reached the plastic strain for the formation of a great nucleus, and at the same position you have reached also the uh, the required stress for the propagation. <clears throat> and uh, in the case three, uh, cleavage fracture is possible if uh, the great nucleus lies uh, in that region because you, uh, the nucleation is possible and the propagation is possible. And here, uh, for, for Great nucleus must lie between uh, x4 and x4 prime for great nucleus uh, for cleavage fracture to be possible. Okay, so that ends that uh, section on cleavage fracture. <coughs>